Yes, I'm back on Facebook. Sorry for the um, brief interruption. Sorry for so sorry for the brief interruption. I'm back. I will just um, wait for like one or two people to join us um, before I continue. Um, we're back. All right. Um, so it says, of a truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So God has no favorite. If you can believe the Bible, work out the principle of the scripture, you will have the same result other people have all over the world. Hallelujah. Yes, Facebook is live, live now. You will have the same result as your pastor does. You will have the same result. So don't let anybody bamboozle you with the spectacular. If you can believe the word of God, you will have the same result. People all over the world, whether in China, whether in UK, whether in Nigeria, whether in Zimbabwe, wherever you are, God honors those who honors his word. I would say he exalts his word above his name. So if you can believe the word of God and practice it, if you can believe the Bible, if you can believe the scripture and practice it, you will see the same result men of God all over the world are seeing her having in their personal lives, in their ministry. So God has no, no so don't say, uh, God listens to this person more than he listens to me. God hears this person's prayer more than he, he, he will hear my own prayer. I mean, people, sometimes people ask me to pray for them, not because they, it's, the reason they ask me to pray for them is because they think God hears me more than he hears them. And that is, that's all a lie. That's the enemy deceiving you. God does not love me more than he loves you. God loves every believer equally. We have the same access to the Father. We have the same, um, it's the same grace, it's the same Father, uh, it's the same Jesus, it's the same Savior, it's the same Holy Spirit we have, it's the same Bible we read. Hallelujah. So if you can approach God, believe the word, believe in your heart, you will receive the same result I have in life. Hallelujah. So God does not hear me more than he hears you. If you believe the word the way I believe the word, if you will practice the principle of the scripture, you will have the same result. Hallelujah. So um, it says that, but in every nation, whoever fears God and walks righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching pre peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Verse 37 says, that word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism with Jesus preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Do you know that Christ is not the surname of Jesus? Christ simply means the anointed one. So anyone that is in Christ is also anointed. Hallelujah. Anyone, any man, versus if any man being in Christ is a new creation. creation. How God anointed Omoshaye Falujo. How God anointed Adebola Adele. How not God anointed Ori Omiyayo. How God anointed you. It says, see, it's the same anointing. It says, the Bible says, we have an anointing from the Holy One and we know all things. The same anointing that was poured upon the Lord Jesus Christ has been poured upon every believer. It says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. It's one thing to have the Holy Spirit. It's another thing to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, people are baptized with the Holy Spirit, but not everyone is experiencing the fullness of God's power. Jesus told his disciples, he said, you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says in Luke 4, 14, that, and Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, you may be born of the Spirit, baptized of the Holy Spirit, but if you want to walk in the fullness of God's power, you need to enter the place of prayer. After Jesus got baptized with the Holy Spirit at Jordan, when he got baptized and then, you know, the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove and a voice came. Now he went into the wilderness fasting and praying. <laughs> you must walk out that power if you really want to see the result that Jesus had. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power they are like um two simultaneous simultaneous things that happen like when you receive the holy spirit you also receive power hallelujah it's called dynamis the miraculous power of god that can raise the dead that can heal the sick and you know what it's not just limited to the miraculous it's the same power that can bring financial prosperity yes you heard me that same power 
can bring fine. Dunamis is all encompassing. It's the miraculous power of God. It's that same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. It's the same power that can make you prosper financially. It's the same power that, see, it is, <laughs> hallelujah. You have that power. Can you just say after me, the resurrection power of God dwells inside of me. Just say it over and over. Resurrection power dwells inside of me. It was that same power God used in raising Christ from the dead. Resurrection power dwells inside of me. I have the power, the same power, Jesus, not a lesser quality of power. God didn't give you a lesser anointing. He didn't give you a lesser quality of power. The same power, Bible says the same power that raised Jesus from the, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Romans chapter 8. Let me read that. Romans chapter 8. Verse 11. It says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead, we also give life to your mortal body. Let me tell you, resurrection power is at work inside of you. You may not be seeing the manifestation of it like every other person. See, people experience the manifestation to the extent at which they work out that power. So you have power, but does not mean that you are walking in the manifestation of the power. This is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil for God was with him. When God is with you, you will experience the manifestation of God's power in ways. See, it's not just limited to spiritual things. Some people think the power of God is just for healing the sick, raising the dead. That same power can prosper you in your business. That same power can give you visibility in your sphere of influence. Hallelujah. You know, we read in when we were looking into Acts chapter 7, that how God was with Joseph and he made him prosper in everything that he did. That same God that was with Joseph was also with the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says he was healing all not so hallelujah he was heal healing all all in the ministry of jesus all well he was healing all that were oppressed i speak by the anointing of the holy ghost anyone under the oppression of darkness anyone under the oppression of the spirit of darkness i declare healing into your life right now in the name of jesus i declare deliverance in the name of jesus i declare deliverance in the name of jesus scripture says in genesis 39 verse 2 it says the lord was with joseph and he was a successful man let me tell you when the lord is with you it's not just to raise the dead heal the sick make the lame walk it works in every aspect of life it can cause the barren to be fruitful it can cause your business to to bloom, he can cause you to prosper. He says, The Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man. You may not need to see the dead rise, you may just need uh, prosperity in your finances. You may not need to see the lame walk, you may just need God, you know, you may just need a supernatural shift in your personal life right now. Let me see you. That power of God is all encompassing. The dunamis, the power of the Holy Spirit, is not just limited to the miraculous. You can experience it in your sphere of influence. Whether you're an engineer, you're a fashion designer, you're an interior decorator, you're a preacher in any aspect of life you can experience the power of god the miraculous power of god hallelujah it can cause a shift in your life i pray i speak to the barren right now by the power of the holy ghost be fruitful in the name of jesus you have been experiencing stagnancy in any area of your life i declare move forward by the anointing and the power of the holy ghost to move forward i command in the name of jesus that you make progress by the anointing of the holy ghost you are sick in your body by this anointing you are healed in the name of jesus this is how god anointed jesus see i need you to put your name in there how god anointed omoshe i don't know what your name is wherever you're watching me from right now just say how god anointed omoshe with the holy ghost and with power with the holy ghost and with dunamis who went about doing good i go about doing good I go about doing good. I go about so I go about being successful in all that I do. Everything I lay my hands upon prosper. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Whatever I lay my hands upon, it prospers. Whatever I do, I experience prosperity. Hallelujah. Sorry. Um sorting out our um 
Instagram Fox Oh, I decree in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost you are making forceful advancement in the name of Jesus forceful advancement I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost you are making forceful advancement in the name of Jesus supernatural progress by the power of the Holy Ghost supernatural progress by the power of the Holy Ghost you are making forceful advancement by the anointing of the Holy Ghost for the scripture says you have an anoint- you have an anointing from the Holy One you know all things what you need to know to for your life to move forward what you need to know for your life to make progress you are coming into the understanding of these things by the Spirit in the name of Jesus you are coming into the understanding of these things by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I speak by this power that everything you lay your hands upon it prospers in the name of the Bible says for, for God was with Joseph for, for God was with Joseph and he was successful in all that he did I pray whatever it is you you are doing right now whatever the sphere of influence you belong to Whatever your professional niche is, I pray for you by the Spirit. You're gonna be success. You're gonna be successful in the name of Jesus. In the, you're like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth fruit in every season. Jesus was never stranded. When he was supposed to pay his tax, he told Peter, "Go to the mouth of the fish." When the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon you, you will always know what to do. You will never be stranded. When he got to um, the wedding at Cana in Galilee, the, their water finished. He said, "Fill all the water." the water pots fill all the water pot so you will never be stranded in the name of jesus whether you are an hr consultant you are an engineer you are an educationist you are a, an interior whatever your sphere of influence by the reason of the anointing and the power of the holy ghost you prosper in the name of jesus you make forceful advancement in jesus mighty name so how god anointed omoshe with the holy spirit and with power who went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed by the devil. For God was with her. God is with me. Say after me, God is with me. I am not alone. God is with me. Because God is with me, I prosper. Because God is with me, I'm successful. Because God is with me, I will never be stranded. Because God is with me, I know all things. Because God is with me, oh, I make forceful advancement. Because God is with me, I prosper in all that I do. In the name of Jesus. Bible says in verse 39, And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Can you see that? The most anointed man that ever lived was killed by hanging on a tree. But thank God that hanging was for us. Bible says that blessed is he. He said, for it is written, cost is any man that hangs on a tree. He said, but that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. Through the hanging on the tree, he became sick that we might be healed. He became our sin so that we might become righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, him God raised up. If anybody ever told you that Jesus did not write up, they told you a lie. Our Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. And he lives to die no more. And he's coming again. Bible says him, God raised up. You know how God raised him up? Bible says the greatest power God has ever used in the universe was demonstrated in the raising of Jesus. It was that same power. Bible says it's the same spirit that raised up. See, let me read it again. You need to understand that it's not a lesser quote. It's not a lesser power. It's not a lesser Holy Ghost. It's not another Holy Ghost. It's not another. It's the same power. Romans 8, it says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead, Hey, my sovereignty, katiga laba sovereignty. Everything that is dead in your life, they are coming alive by the resurrection power. In the name of Jesus, anything dead, the, the doctors have told you they have given you a report that the cells in your body are dead. The cells in your liver, the cells in your kidney. I speak life to those cells right now. In the name of Jesus, resurrection power is at work in you. Resurrection power is at work in you. Your business has been dead. Your career has been dead. You have been trying to do things over and over and it keeps dying. I speak life to anything dead around you right now. In the name of Jesus, 
It told you that you can't assimilate things, that you have to, that once you get to a certain age, you have to start forgetting things, you have amnesia, you begin to, I speak by the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, life into your brain cells, in the name of Jesus. I speak life. They told you that cancer, cancerous cells have, you know, eating up your body organs. I speak life into those things. Because the same power that went into hell, that went into hell, ah, I like the song. It says, death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. you Silence the burst of sin. See, let me tell you, when Jesus went into hell, he didn't went, he, he did not go as the anointed one. He went as a sinner. He went carrying our sins. When Jesus died and he went into hell, you know, devil pounced on him. Demon pounced on him. Devil thought he had defeated him. He said, yes, you, see, you, you are the one calling yourself the son of God. Yes. The, see, the three days he spent in hell were the darkest days of his life. Why? Because he carried our sins. He carried our sicknesses. He carried everything we ever have to go through in this life. So when the enemy saw him in hell, he thought he had overcame. He thought he had defeated Jesus. But little did, did he know that he was... It, it was already written that God will not leave his soul in hell. And Bible say on the third day. Ha! Please, can you give me the song? Um, Forever the, the moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was... The devil thought it was winning. But on the third day, something happened. The foundations of hell shook. The foundations of hell shook. Devil, the Bible says if the, any, if the God of this world had known, he wouldn't have allowed Jesus to be crucified because he did not know that was his defeat in disguise. Bible says that, see, the resurrection power of God, that same dynamo went into hell, shook the foundations of hell and raised Jesus up from the dead. Jesus is alive. If anybody ever told you that Jesus, that all those things that tell you is alive, Jesus is our life. Our Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is now living in you and high. I need you to say after me, resurrection power is at work in me. Resurrection power is at work in me. Resurrection power is at work in me. It is giving life to every dead situation. It's bringing life to every dead situation. Is bringing life into my family, bringing life into my business, bringing life into my finance, bringing life into my daughter's child in the name of Jesus. You have a daughter that is sick of cerebral palsy and the doctors have told you that it is an irrepla- irreversible damage to the daughter's brain. I speak life to those, br- to those brain cells right now in the name of Jesus. Resurrection power can bring to life what, has, what, the, what um, the word has written off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not a lesser power. It's the same power. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. It's given life to your mortal body. It's given life to your mortal body. You are sick in your body right now. Resurrection power is at work. I need you to begin to, you know, put to work that power right now. Say after me, resurrection power is at work in me. Speak to your joints. Speak to your body. Speak to your wrist. Speak to your knee, your knee joint, your ankle joint. They have told you it's arthritis. Speak life to it. Jesus can never have arthritis. Jesus can never have a crisis. Jesus can never have body pain. Jesus can never have malaria. Speak to your body. Hallelujah. Resurrection power is at work in your spirit. Let it ooze to your outer man. Hallelujah. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you for your power at work in the lives of everyone under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Jesus. I want to round up now. And um, the Bible says that him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God. Even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Guess what? The Jesus that resurrected is not a spiritual. The Jesus that resurrected is now a man. He has flesh like you and I. The Bible says he ate and he drank. Spirits don't eat. Spirits don't drink. He had a hole in his hand. He told um, Thomas, he said, dip your hand into it. I was the one who died. Yes, it's not another, it's not another Jesus. It's not a spirit. God raised his body. Let me tell you, they have told you that uh, it's only spirits that can receive such resurrection. Jesus told Mary, he said, if you believe, he said, I believe you are the resurrection. Uh, I believe there's another resurrection. Just said, I am the resurrection. I'm the life. Whatever you have given up on, I want you to know that Jesus, the resurrection and the life is here right now. And he's bringing life to every dead situation in your life in the name of Jesus. 
Bible says that he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and of the dead. To him, all the prophet witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Hallelujah. So when you put faith in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are cancelled. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. I am so glad my sins are forgiven. Apostle Peter said that whoever believes in him will receive remission of sin. Remission of sin simply means that your sins are cancelled. In the account of God, the things you have done in the past no longer exist. My sins are forgiven. Oh, what a jo- what a joyful thing to know that my sins are forgiven. My sins have been cancelled. God no longer put into account the wrong things I've done. See, there are things you can't share with people. There are things you have done in the past that you may not be afraid to come on social media and talk about. You don't need to talk about them. The moment you believe Jesus, the moment you put faith in Jesus, God canceled. The Bible said he had blotted out every written ordinance. All those things that the enemy is holding against you, it no longer exists in the account of God. And I need you to rejoice right now because your sins have been forgiven. If you are a believer, you believe Jesus is Lord and your Savior. Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. Let me tell you, your sins have been canceled. Hallelujah. 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 Even to the baddest rapist, to the murderer, to the... um. Prosti- to the process of whatever your sin has been, whatever the things you have done in the past, the moment you put faith in, see, he didn't even say the moment you confessed it, he said the moment you put faith in Jesus, whoever believes in him, hallelujah, receives remission of my sins have been forgiven, my sins have been forgiven, glory to God, my sins have been forgiven, my sins have been forgiven, my sins have been forgiven. This is the boldness we have to come before God and pray, and we know that He will answer. This is the boldness that takes us to the place of prayer. And we know that when we pray, God hears us. Because when he sees us, he does not see a sinner. He sees his righteousness. He sees us through the eyes of Christ. Hallelujah. This is the boldness that takes us to the place of prayer. Bible says this is the confidence we have. That when we approach the Father, he hears us. He hears us. He hears us. When God sees you, he is excited to hear you pray. God is excited to hear you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, what a blessedness. What a blessedness to know that my sins have been forgiven. And let me tell you, it wasn't just your sins that were forgiven. Every consequence of sin, sickness, oppression, whatever it is, everything that comes, Bible says the wages of sin is death. Everything that brings death is the wage of sin. Now, because your sin has been forgiven, all those consequences today have no right. See, sickness has no right in your body. Depression has no right in your mind. Whatever it is, the enemy is dis- as in putting on you has no right to stay you just need to speak to those things this thing has no right to stay in my body because jesus already took it see it is the devil trying to bring back what jesus already took tell him when the enemy reminds you of the past remind him of the blood when he reminds you of your past remind him of the blood when he brings something on your body remind him that jesus already took it hallelujah Halle- my sins have been forgiven my my sins have been for my sicknesses have been healed Every consequence of sin has been taken away. Hallelujah. And this is what God told us to go and tell the world. Tell the world their sins have been forgiven. Tell the world I no longer count their sin against them. Tell the world I'm no longer mad. God is not mad at us. God is not mad with you. God has a bad case of I love you for you. That was why he sent Jesus to come and die for you. He says whoever believes in him. Ah, Kaya. Hey, you don't have to walk to earn God's righteousness. You don't have to walk to earn God's forgiveness. You don't have to earn God's forgiveness. You just need to believe. It's as simple as just putting faith in Jesus. I believe and then God cancels it. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Thank you, Father. For my sins have been forgiven. Thank you, Father. For my sins have been forgiven. Thank you, Father. For you no longer put my past into account. Thank you, Father. For Jesus blotted out every written ordinance against me. Thank you, Father. For those things the enemy is using against me no longer exist in your mind, oh God. Thank you, Father. You now have a clean slate. <gasps> Hallelujah. Your sins have been forgiven. See, if I end tonight's teaching, I know that I've delivered the counsel of God to you. Your sins have been. See, you can't say it enough. You can't say it enough. 
you know, this is the boldness we have to go into God's presence and call him father. Because when he sees you, he no longer sees sin. He sees, he sees, a, he sees someone that has been blood washed, someone that has been smeared in blood, someone that has been smeared in the blood of Jesus. He sees Christ through you. He sees you through Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Jesus does not have a higher amount of righteousness. You have the same righteousness that Jesus has. You now have the right standing that Jesus has. When Jesus is standing beside the, before the Father, you are standing beside him. Bible says that God, let me read something to you in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. Oh, glory to God. My sins have been forgiven. My sins have been forgiven. Stop glorying in your past. Stop allowing the enemy take advantage of you. Ephesians chapter 2. Um, from that chapter 1. Bible says that it was talking about that dunamis, that power God used in raising Christ from the dead. See, this was why Apostle Paul prayed that the eyes of the understanding will be enlightened. He didn't pray that they will have money. He prayed that their eyes will be on, uh, of understanding will be enlightened so that they may know the riches that is in Christ Jesus. He says that so that you will know the exceeding greatness of God's power, the exceeding greatness of God's dunamis towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, everything that is named in this age and in the age that is to come. He says, and he put all things under his feet. You don't know what verse 2 says, and you, and me, you and I, he made alive. We were dead in trespasses. And then, it says, and if, but God who is rich in mercy, I'm reading chapter 2 from verse 4 now, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he has loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together. Did you see that? He made us, when Jesus rose from the dead, it was not only Jesus that rose. Many other believed, as in, we rose together with him. When Jesus died, he didn't die alone. We died with him. We died when he was raised, we were raised with him. He says that, and God, and when we were dead in trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. He says, and he raised us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly places. See, Jesus is not just by the right side of God alone. We are there sitting with him. We have the same seat. We have the same stand. We have the same righteousness. We have the same boldness. We have the same access. Jesus can call God Father the same way we can call him Father. Hallelujah, because our sins have been forgiven. See, if you're a believer, you have been afraid to go into the place of prayer to call on God to, you know, you, have, you, you, you make a little mistake and the devil used that against you from, you know, from praying, from approaching God. See, you need to wake up that your sins have been forgiven. They have been telling you that this Jesus thing is not for you, that you, your own sin is too much for God to forgive that. See, the blood of Jesus has washed and washed and washed and then they still stain on your own. That, that, that your that, that your your sins are still still has um, some blood um, some stain. No, tell them. He was I was whitewashed, blood washed, smelling blood. Oh, I'm a proud member of the blood get because I'm powered by the blood of the God man. He's the blood of sprinkling used for my cleansing. I spend blood money. I'm a favored somebody. The rather God of peace when he saw the blood gushing down the body of Jesus when he hallelujah. We are we have been blood washed. We have been smeared in blood. Hallelujah. You are smeared. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. And you have the same righteousness. The same standing. The same seating. The same boldness. The same access into the presence of the Father. This was what the angel told, Cornel- told Peter to come and tell Cornelius and his household. He didn't come to tell him, oh you, you are just an ordinary Gentile. Jesus did not die for you. Jesus died for us. We, we are the Jew. No. He said, go and tell the world. Their sins have been forgiven. Salvation is not just for the Jews alone. It's for the Gentile. It's for that prostitute that is watching. It's for that murderer that is listening to this. It's for that person that you know has a bad past that listens. Their sins have been forgiven. All they need to do is to believe. Hallelujah. All you need to do is to believe. Hmm. Look and leave my brother Lee. Look to Jesus now and leave. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. That it's only that you lose. See, if you ever go to hell, see, you don't, you don't have any reason to go to hell. 
You don't have because Jesus already paid for it. The reason people will lament in hell is because they they will they will understand that the, all they needed to do was just to put faith in Jesus. That they didn't have to work for it. They didn't have to. He says we know in the terror of God we persuade men. He said the goodness of God is what leads men to repentance. It's not the judgment of God. People have been you know um scaring you with things. <laughs> oh God. Oh, thank you, Father. For our sins have been forgiven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to wrap this up. Time has gone. Time has gone. He says, whoever believes in him will receive the remission of sin. Do you believe in Jesus? Your sins have been canceled. He says, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many, okay, verse 44 says, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. See, when you tell the word, their sins have been forgiven. There's such an overwhelming of the Holy Ghost that we see. It's, it's, it's more like you enwrapped in the love of God. It's more like you, like, more like you being wrapped up in the love of the Father. It is when they heard these things. See, the Gentiles could not. They were they were happy. They were overwhelmed with so much. Dust. You mean all I need to do is believe my sins have been forgiven? Bible says why Peter was still speaking. There was such an overwhelming. The Holy Spirit fell upon all of them, and they began speaking in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah! See, God will bypass protocol to reach out to that prostitute that is staying next to you if you would refuse to tell them about the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, why Peter was still speaking? Like some people are coming under the overwhelming presence of the Holy Ghost right now. You are coming under the overwhelming presence of the Holy Ghost right now. Because you are coming into the full understanding of the love of the Father. In the name of Jesus. He says, why Peter was still speaking? The, this, these words, these words of forgiveness, these words of reconciliation, these words of katalaso, these words that God is no longer mad at the Gentiles, that salvation is not just for the Jews alone, but for us, also for the Gentiles. While Peter was still speaking these things, hey, this is what the world needs to hear. The world needs to hear that their sins have been paid for. No man should go to hell, I'm telling you. No ma- nobody deserves to go to hell. Nobody deserves to go to hell. I know that the nature of man demands justice. But let me tell you, the nature of God demands mercy. The nature of God speaks mercy in place of justice. The nature of God speaks mercy. I know that there are people in your life, you just want them to pay for their sin. You want God to deal with them. You want, them, you want God to you know, frustrate their life because of the things they have done. But I'm telling you, the mercy of God overrules judgment. The mercy of God overrules judgment. You may want them to be judged, but the God, perhaps say, hey, is mercy. Hey, yes, thank you. Someone said it has been paid in full. Yes, Jesus. Jesus cleared the account on your behalf. You are not owing Satan anything. No. You are not owing the kingdom of darkness anything. Jesus paid for it. Just enter the fullness of what God has prepared for you in Christ Jesus. Bible says that, um, and then they began speaking in tongues. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. It says, for they heard them speak with tongues. They were surprised. They thought it was speaking in tongues was just meant for Jews alone. They were surprised that Gentiles too had received the Holy Ghost. It says, and then had been poured out on the Gentiles. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter said, can anyone forbid water that this should not be baptized? Who have received the Holy Spirit as we have? See, the normal progression is that you first receive Jesus, you get baptized in the Spirit, and then you, you, see, um, you go and do water baptism. It was the reverse in these people's case. God can bypass protocol. All you need to do is put faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. God can bypass any protocol to get to you. He says, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Time will not permit me to go into chapter 11. I will just summarize it to you. Actually, when the other elders of the church in Jerusalem heard that Peter went in to meet the Gentiles, they were unhappy. That Why? According to our law, a Jew is not supposed to go into the house of a Gentile. But then Paul had to, Peter had to retreat all the experiences of how he was in his, in his house. He saw a trance. The Lord showed him something, a vision, told him not to call what is common unclean. And then uh, it got to, the spirit of the Lord told him to go with those men. He went to the house of Cornelius. He, he was preaching while he was preaching. 
He got back. He didn't even lay hands on them. Ah. Jehovah overdo. Hallelujah. He will bypass any protocol to get to you. I believe you have been blessed tonight. See, I just want to leave you with this charge. That you should go rejoicing that your sins have been forgiven. This is something to shout about. My sins have been forgiven. Bible says in the book of Psalms 103, say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Forget not his benefit. What are those benefits? He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He says, he who forgave your iniquities. See, one of the reasons you should thank the Lord always is because your sins have been forgiven. You know, it's not, see, you know, may not have money in your bank account. You may not, things may not be going the way you expected. Coronavirus could have, you know, affected your businesses. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, because he forgave thy, he forgiveth thy iniquities. And he healed, he healed all thy diseases. See, the same person that forgave your iniquities, healed all your diseases, restored your youth like that of an eagle. See, every consequence of sin was taken care of by the blood of Jesus on the cross. So rejoice. I, I, I leave you with this charge that you should continue to bless the Lord because your see your sin was not it was not like God eh, it was written in Biro and someone had tried to you know clean it with eraser. It was not written in pencil. It was blotted out completely in the account of God it no longer exists. So I leave you tonight telling you to go and rejoice because your sins have been forgiven. And because your sins have been forgiven, your sickness has been healed. Every consequence of sin has been taken care of. That thing the enemy is using against you, say, yeah, the reason you have not given birth was because you were a prostitute. And then all the years, all the babies you are supposed to give birth to, when you were in the world, you have aborted all of them. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You may, they may even have removed your womb. But because your sins have been forgiven, the supernatural will see we the, we we hold a baby in your womb and you will give birth. Forget the past; it no longer exists in the mind of God. So go rejoicing because your sins have been forgiven. I call you blessed. Have a wonderful night, rest. Join me again next week, Friday. By the grace of God, will be because what is in chapter ten is almost what is in chapter eleven, and then I will try to look into chapter eleven and twelve. I'll just summarize chapter eleven and I will go into chapter twelve. I'm sure you have been blessed. You can still share this video with someone that needs to hear, that needs to know that their sins have been forgiven. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to um seeing you again next week, Friday. 8 30 make it a day to gonna start early um god bless you glory thank you that your highest king will welcome thank you for joining i love you celebrate you glory glory hallelujah for me when the sun sets free oh it's free indeed I'm a child of God yes I